Transparency. We all know what it is, but I wonder how many of us take it for granted. Way back when, application developers were challenged with differentiating documents that had no pixel content versus those that did, particularly images or layers today filled with white. Long story short, the engineers decided that a light gray and white checkerboard pattern was just the ticket. The checkerboard pattern is noticeable enough to the eye, yet at the same time does not distract the viewer from their work. Okay, simple enough. Transparency is a representation of an image or layer that contains no content. So what's the lesson? The lesson is managing transparency. Let's take a look at an example. I'm going to get rid of these layers and trash them as if we had our blank document here. You'll notice up here in the layers panel, I have a background layer only. I'm going to reset my colors to black and white by hitting the D key on the keyboard. And I'm going to select my elliptical marquee tool here by hitting M on the keyboard. Holding down shift, I'm going to drag out a circular selection. And then I'm going to select my paintbrush tool and lower my opacity down to say 20%. What I want to do here is I just simply want to very gently create what appears to be a sphere that's being lit from the upper right hand side of my uh, image or my sphere if that may be. All right, I'm going to hit Command or Control D on the keyboard and take a look at our sphere. Now you can see that again my light source would be right up here and I've got this obviously round looking sphere. If I wanted to move it, I can't. If I grab my move tool and try to move it, it's going to say that I can't move it because the layer is locked. That's because I've painted on the background layer and the background is white. Let me select everything here and hit delete on my keyboard. And by doing so, it's going to bring up the fill dialog box and then I'm simply going to select white once more. Now again, you can see my background layer is white. I'm going to create a new layer in the layers panel by clicking on the new layer icon. Now you can see that my layer one is transparent. It is transparent. How do we know this? Because there is a gray and white checkerboard pattern. So let's go ahead and repeat that same process. I've got my elliptical mark key tool selected. Holding down shift, I'm gonna drag out a selection once more. Now I'm gonna select that paintbrush tool once more by hitting the B key on the keyboard. This time I actually think I'm gonna select a slightly larger brush. I still have 20% opacity right up here. And I'm just gonna very gently touch my pen to the tablet and kind of paint this little sphere in here. And I'm kind of moving around just a little bit. And there we go. Now I'm going to paint just a little bit more, make it another pass. I'm going to make another pass just on the bottom. Again, I want to create the effect as if we have this sphere light source up on the right. Command or Control D on the keyboard. I'm going to deselect once more. Now if I select my Move tool, I can move that sphere around my image. Again, because it's on a layer above it. And you can see this transparency once again in the Layers panel. Now, if I wanted to say increase the shadow content of the lower portion of this sphere, if I select my paintbrush tool and maybe I get a slightly smaller brush and I want to try to paint that in, you can see that, well, obviously I'm painting on everything there. What I need is a selection. If I held the command or control key down and I tapped on the layer itself, you'd think that you could make a selection in some cases, but what happens here is that no pixels are more than 50% selected. Meaning, if we were to turn off the background layer's visibility, you can see our checkerboard pattern over here. You can also see it inside of our sphere. Because I painted with a lower opacity than 100%, there is transparency here. So, let's turn the visibility of that background layer on once more. I can't make a selection because I need more pixels. Now, if I wanted to add to this selection, or add to this sphere, I should say, I'd be out of luck. However, this icon right up here allows me to lock transparent pixels, meaning I can restrict manipulation of this layer only to the portion that actually has pixel content or pixel data. So now when I select a brighter color here, just so we can see this a little bit better, as I paint on this sphere, I can add to it. Now keep in mind, I have a bright red color selected. As I paint on this sphere, it doesn't look very opaque. Now, of course, my opacity is set at 20%, so as I keep making multiple passes, it's building up color, but it's still not as opaque as the color that we see in our color swatch over here. I'm going to uncheck Lock Transparent Pixels for a moment, and I'm going to increase the opacity to 100%, and now draw over here on the right-hand side. Now, of course, you're seeing the color that we would see in our color picker. I'm going to undo that by hitting Command or Control Z on my keyboard. And now I'm once again going to lock transparent pixels and paint with 100% on our sphere. Now it's becoming a little bit more opaque, but it's still not as opaque as this over here. Let's turn off the visibility of our background layer once more. 
again, you can see that there is transparency there. So what's happening here is it's only going to build up color to the level of transparency that we originally painted that black and white or grayscale sphere. So why is all this important? Well, it's a great alternative to making selections of objects or images on a transparent background. Let's take a look at a practical example. Let's say you've got some line art here. And if I turn off the background layer, the visibility icon, you can see that this is simply line art on a transparent background. Now I want to color this fish and add a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to go over to my color picker and select a nice light color blue tone. And then I'm going to color this fish with kind of a, kind of a quick technique here. I'm going to hit the W key on the keyboard to select my magic wand tool. And I'm going to make a selection of the background. Now I ultimately want to paint the fish. So what I need to do is I need to inverse this selection that I've just made. So under select, I'm going to drop down here to inverse. And then I'm going to go back to select once more and I'm going to contract my selection by two pixels. And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that I'm selecting kind of inside that black right there. Now I'm going to hold the command or control key down and I'm going to tap on the new layer icon within the layers panel. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a new layer beneath the layer that I had selected. And I'm just simply going to name this fish. Now I'm going to go up under edit and select fill contents with my foreground color. Incidentally, there are keyboard shortcuts for all this, but I'm kind of going the long way. I wanted you to see this. So now I've got a nice down and dirty painting of my fish. And that's not exactly what I wanted, but it's pretty close. So I'm going to start by kind of correcting it a little bit. And I'm going to hit the E key on the keyboard for my eraser tool. And I'm just going to paint away, uh, or erase if you will, the areas within the eye that I want to maintain white. And we're going to keep those pupils there and just a little bit right outside of there. All right, let's zoom back out. I'm going to go ahead and leave the balloons there, or excuse me, the bubbles uh, blue. That's fine for the purposes of our demonstration. But again, we can always go back and kind of fix that. So now I've got a nice, uh, well, basically flat painting. And I want to add a little bit more dimension to it. Now, as we spoke before, if I were to select my paintbrush tool and I were to select something a little bit darker here, if I were to paint uh, a shadow to the underbelly, I'm obviously painting outside the lines. I don't want to do that. So this is a perfect opportunity to lock those transparent pixels and now add a little dimension to the bottom of our fish. There we go. That's kind of really darkening the bottom up there. But I'd like a little bit more control. So I'm actually going to undo those last couple of steps right there. And I'm going to tap on this icon right up on my options bar. This icon is going to enable me to vary the opacity of my brush based on how hard I physically press my pen to the tablet. So now when I come over here and paint kind of lightly, I'm darkening it up, but I'm basically lightening the opacity by lightening the touch of my pen to the tablet. I'm going to press a little bit harder down here in his bottom fin. All right, so we got that kind of darkened up there, and I want to lighten up a little bit in the kind of the inner portions of the fin. There we go. That looks pretty good. And let's just kind of whack the tail there just a little bit more. Again, pressing very lightly and building up a little bit of color. I'm decreasing the size of my brush right there using the bracket keys. And maybe we want to add a little dimension to the bubbles that are kind of drifting up. Now, if I were to toggle the visibility of this fish line art layer up here on and off, you can see where we've painted. You can see around the eyes, it looks a little rough right there. That's where I used my eraser. And then, of course, you can see the varying tones right inside there as I've lightened up or pressed a little bit harder with my pen to the tablet. There, so that looks pretty good. Now let's add a little bit of highlights there. I'm going to flip over my foreground and background color, and I'm going to decrease the size of my brush just a little bit, and then I'm just going to touch just a little bit on the top of his head and maybe the tops of his fins right there and kind of the edges right there. Maybe we're catching just a little bit of a light uh, from the side. And again, we'll just go right up on the top of those bubbles, adding a little bit of dimension to them. Finally, we'll just add some finishing touches right here. I'm just going to add a little bit of a darkness to the fins. I'm going to flip over my foreground and background color, and we'll just kind of add just a little bit right underneath there and right on the bottom over here and right on that edge. I suppose we could add just a little bit of dimension around the eyes. All right, so there's our fish uh, kind of painted in there. Again, again, kind of somewhat quickly there, but I hope that what you see here is that by locking transparent pixels, you could get a lot more control over the objects on your layers, whether you're working with photographs on transparent backgrounds or your coloring comics or cartoons or any other object. Again, locking transparent pixels enables you to save a little time by not having to make these complex sort of selections. Hope you enjoyed that.